Welcome to We Are Not Wizards. We are the best, but not wizards. Enjoy the show! away from the microphone we start recording he steps away from the microphone like a, like a professional like like the professional i've become to know expect love and one day respect <laughs> one day res- so so you're saying the love's there but the respect just is you're swithering a bit on the respect which is nice I, i'll get there i'm sure i'll get there i'm sure no, i'll get there you don't have to get I'm, there. I'm sure you i can don't I sh- you don't have to get there. I, I, I really do need to for my own sanity you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's just like i don't respect you <laughs> i come in every couple of weeks every five or six weeks we have a chat i don't i don't respect you <laughs> I, I walk away have not respected you welcome to we are not wizards my name's richard <laughs> my name's luke the, unrespe- the unrespected, disrespected. Yeah, we don't want to talk At about. Do- you don't want to talk about I disrespect. Don't respect everyone. You don't want to talk about disrespect. <laughs> it was like you know, this no. is this is this is me reading the message. It's a shame we're not doing video. This is me reading the message, realizing Luke doesn't respect me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, in fact, breaking okay, news. Okay, okay, breaking news. Yeah. To 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 put to put this in context for everybody as to when we are filming this, filming record, recording this. Biden has just stepped out of the presidential candidacy. No, he hasn't. What? He has. No, he, he stepped hasn't. Down. No, he hasn't. Let's yeah, see. Let's stepped down see. about an hour ago. How did I not know this? I'm meant to be a man with like my finger on the pulse of everything that's happening, and you're saying he's just stepped down. My word. A man so close to death that no radical has de- deemed it worthy to bother trying to shoot him. It's probably because he'd forget to be shot. That was a bit, that was a bit dark. <laughs> that was very, very dark. <laughs> As opposed to a man who obviously ordered who obviously ordered his relaxation pillow from Temu and decided just to stick it on his ear anyway. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, it looks like a man, it looks like... He'd... I haven't actually seen a picture of Trump yet with his elephant bandage on his head. It just looks like, oh, oh, it looks I, like somebody's... Just, all I've seen is people dressed like Trump with it. I've not seen it actually Trump like it. It's literally like somebody's run past him with a white post-it note and slapped it on the side of the head and went, you're it, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite scary because I was seeing my... Son, I was seeing my sh- Let's do the intro then. We'll do, right, okay. Hello, welcome to We're Not Wizards. My name's Richard. My name's Luke. Yeah. And we're talking, it's like here, <laughs> that's going to be, it's here, it's full of fear. It is the, we're going to have to change the the, um, the title of this to, to talking about stepping down but remaining presidential. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> do you, are in, you, are you a conspiracy theory guy? Do you like a conspiracy I, theory? Do you know what? I love a good conspiracy theory because I think that I... Some of them I are do. absolutely comedy, and some of them are absolutely you're just like what. I think it's kind of timely that today is basically the fifty fifth anniversary of the first landing on the moon. So NASA, quite rightly, Are you really, yeah. So NASA, it was nineteen, it was nineteen sixty nine. Um, 21st of um yeah 21st yeah it was 21st 19 21st of July 1969 because um in sep- sorry 22nd of November um and I only remember that because of the shit I only remember that because of the Cheryl Cheryl Cole song run baby run he was born <laughs> <laughs> that's um, a weird and unexpected it's reference it's just an unexpected reference the other thing is as well is that the man <coughs> Ar- uh, and according again to according to Miss Cheryl Crow Aldous Huxley died on the same day that President Kennedy got shot as well who? Aldous Huxley he's like a, Aldous Huxley he's like an author 
he did like keep the, the name a- rings a bell, he but keep, I can't. He, I've definitely heard the name. But. He did like keep the Aspidistra flying and stuff like that, which was, um, he did like the Brave New World, the Doors of Deception. Okay, and stuff yeah, like I that. do. He, yeah, yeah, I hear me. Yeah. He did all these kind of various different things. He died on twenty uh, second of November, so I think Kennedy actually was. I can't remember. We're, Americans are screaming at us just now, going. Mr. President was shot on this particular day. How dare you besmirch us? But anyway, this is interesting. If Biden is, <laughs> if Biden is, is, is decided to sit down... Oh, we've got a statement here as well. We could actually read this out. We could be like a news channel for the day. And it's like, you don't need to worry about board games, folks. We could put this out and say this is a statement. But the problem is everybody will know what a statement says yeah. anyway. You know, but could you read it out doing kind of like an impression of Joe Biden? Which was... My... My my middle boy oh, does a scarily. Do he does a. He's he's kind of like, you know, it's kind. I don't know because I'm trying to focus on my mind. But it's over the past three and a half years. It's not. It's almost like Christopher Walken. My son does. Yeah, no, really, you're too you're too coherent there too. He does a good impression of Donald Trump. It's scarily how good his impression of Donald Trump is. We were sitting in the car today, heading to. Um, heading to the other place uh which <laughs> which is actually a place and we were just doing donald trump impressions <laughs> just like you know just like as we just pass things like talking about you know there's there's the um um there's the wind turbine you know it's a great it's the greatest wind turbine there's ever been i've never seen <laughs> a better wind turbine beautiful wind turbine. a lovely great amazing wind turbine they do wind you know uh, amazing and he says his one's best better wind. they do the best wind <laughs> the greatest wind you've ever seen um i was saying to my wife um but then my my son said you you sound like eric cartman a lot of the time. it's like a mixture between eric cartman and trump so i used to be able to do an eric cartman impression i can still do an eric cartman impression because but then everything that you say that eric cartman says is absolutely just not broadcastable <laughs> No. <laughs> and also, I have a microphone far too close to my face to suddenly break into my own Cartman impression, and I just blow people's ears <laughs> out. It just, you know, because you can't, you can't. Oh, actually, you can do. You can do, but not too much. You go, oh, I wish I could fly, but I'll do this guy, but I can't. <laughs> Give me my iron cheesy puffs. <laughs> ma'am, ma'am, how about my cheesy puffs? Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I'm on a big boat, a cheesy puff right now. Otherwise, I won't have a fit. Oh, you could do this I address. I've South Park for ages. You know, love South it was a, a, the South Park the movie was there was so there's so many parts in South Park, Park the movie where I literally I literally peed my pants. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I literally you know over the past two and a half years we've made some great progress as a nation. Today. <laughs> America has the strongest economy oh. in the world. <laughs> We've made this historic investments in rebuilding our nation, and lowering prescription drug costs for seniors, and expanding affordable health care to a number of great Americans. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes all like this. And then he's like, okay, I'll speak to the nation today. It's been the greatest honor of my life. He's literally just like, quit. you know he's going to be called? Joey Quitter. That's what they're going to call him. They're going to call him Joey Quitter. Have you ever heard uh, there's an American stand-up comedian called Shane Gillis who does just the greatest Trump impression you will ever see? I'm going to go one further and say there's a slight similarity between you and Shane Gillis. There's a slight... (laughs) There's a slight... Except this. Yeah. Except you're... Except you're... There's... No, I'm going to... Like, let me just look at Shane Gillis. You're not actually... I get what you're saying. Yeah. I'm going to just look at this. That's actually, oh yeah, actually he does. He, he does, does look have a like, He does have a mustache. Yeah, the problem. Yeah. Shane Gillis does this. He doesn't have a goatee though. Usually, does he? He has. A, he, he has just a mustache. He has he? a goatee in the. Um, does he have a bit? He does. He does. He had a. Oh, I do look a bit like a do, British Shane Gillis, do don't I? Like, like I'm gonna. He does. There's a. Jesus bit, Christ. There's literally a Shane Gillis that looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to put this. This is gonna have to be. I'm gonna have to change. The um, I'm gonna have to change the artwork for this episode and put you in <laughs> instead of in space instead of yours. That'd be amazing. 
This podcast is going nowhere today. We're not even talking. We've gone full Spobo. <laughs> We've gone full board game snobs. We're just nowhere near. <laughs> just lost it. It's just the excitement of finding. It's the excitement of finding out that Joseph Biden has left the bell down. It's crazy though, isn't it? That's Who, amazing. That's going to run against Trump now. Who's going to Who's going to run knowing they're going to lose? Because they've got to do something hell on earth to to win it. I now. just I don't know what is going to. Um, I have no idea what is going to happen. I mean, the reason Biden was still running, from my understanding at least, was because the Democrats had nobody that the world or America gave two shits about in comparison to Trump, you know. I just, I don't know. I, and obviously none of them wanted to step forward because I presume most of the political parties fully expect Trump to win anyway. So nobody wants to to, to run knowing you're almost certainly going to get second place. Do you know what I think it is? I think nobody wants to deal with a tantrum. Because... The, the tantrum of, what, if they did beat Trump? The, if the, they beat Trump, it's going to straight away going to be, you know, this is America. You know, now they get my better me. And it's going to be like that. And they're going to have to deal with the, the, the kind of the potential tantrum that's going to happen afterwards, the potential kind of, this was another fix. We lost the election again, but this time they definitely cheated. Here's the proof and stuff like that. And I think it's kind of, I don't think anybody, I think people are going to be looking at us as like, they're going to look at, <clears throat> and hats off to, um, hats off, unless that hat had like spikes in the inside, but hats off to Sunak who basically went, yeah, we got beat and there you go. And they're all kind of like, there's a, you know, and somebody was saying that they what actually. What else could he say though, to be fair? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, they were saying like the Europe, the, a lot of European television stations actually come over specifically for the handover of power in the UK because like, they film it and broadcast it as a news event because there are so many kind of European countries that are amazed that the UK still does the whole kind of like, yeah, we're just going to do this as proper proper sporting chaps. Mm -hmm. Well done. You beat me. I beat you. Um, well done to us. <laughs> I have, I ha you know. I had never, I had never noticed before though how terrifying a prime minister's other half can look like when they're standing behind <laughs> the prime minister as they say their farewells because sweet mother of christ rishi sunak's wife was terrifying that was literally you know, she, I, there was one it made the, the the camera angle made it look like she was three foot two <laughs> but also on the edge of world domination <laughs> just just I, I mean, like that like film if she had orphan. a carbon copy of herself stood next to each other, it would have been just utterly perfect. Did you, know? you say to me they actually had pictures of her like just standing there in various kind of her eyes glowing and everything like that, and a small mark on the six 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 head and saying like that's it, we're going down to, you know, the flames of hell, kind of burrowing round her. I was just like, like, do you wonder like when you when that's happening, right? Because I don't know. I don't know if if that's one of those things where like nobody like you haven't got BBC ITV crews there you haven't got Sky crews there there's there's a, a camera crew there and they're all given that feed you know to, mm. to to kind of show on their thing was there nobody in that production department that was like um um everybody look look at Mr Sunak look <laughs> look look what does that is that not terrifying can is there, can anybody else see this look look you know kind of thing to, and try to at least zoom it in a bit subtly Just and try and take her out of the image or something like that or they were sitting there going look at Mrs. Zunak oh my terrifying. god have you seen this she looks fucking terrifying <laughs> it's like uh, she's like uh, Victoria Newman in The Boys I don't know if you've been watching The Boys she's like the vice yeah. president <laughs> and I was just expecting any second for yeah. you just as Sunak went yeah, thanks very much, guys. Uh, thanks for everything. I'll see you later. And his head just going, boom, and popping. Yeah. And then she just turns around and walks away. If she just pulled away. out a gun and shot him in the back of the head, I don't think I'd have been that shocked by that point. I was just, because that's what she looked like she was about to do. Do you think when they're inside, indoors and stuff like that, he, she calls him Rishi Murti? Do you think, you know, do you think it's like, you've got my second name. It's like, who's, the, and he's like, oh, uh, well, I don't think so. I'm the prime minister. It's like, who's the billionaire? <laughs> who's the billionaire? Yeah. You sit down, yeah. sit down in your high chair. Otherwise yeah. you won't get your rusk. You only had that because I put you there. <laughs> exactly. <You know? laughs> 
<laughs> you She's the puppet master behind it. To. I'm gonna. We're gonna go outside there. You're gonna give your con, your 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 speech and say goodbye, and I am gonna go and scare everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let everybody know who who's was the senior power the real boss? in the Conservative Party. Who's the real boss? I the re- literally should somebody should Photoshop her just very slightly just floating <laughs> above the ground. Just, so a, just have a mysterious cloud behind her. Just oh. you know, just it's like she's like she's just come out of a portal. <laughs> you know, she'd have Harry the cat or whatever it's called on the railings upside down, get it skewered. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's, there's Cthulhu. There's uh, the Yellow King, and there's Mrs. Sunak. They're the elder gods, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just love. I mean, that's what we go with Arkham Horror, isn't there? There's going to be an Arkham yeah. Horror set kind of coming out, going call, calling yeah. it the politics version. <laughs> you know, she's she's got to be written in as a betrayal of the House of the Hill, oh, like really? alter uh, one of the one of the uh, haunts, you know. <laughs> This it's like Simon's latest stretch goal for zombie side. It's the queen, the queen of it all. Just I'm, standing there. I'm fully expecting her to now turn up in episode in Encounter 17 in Oathsworn as one of the bosses we've got to fight. I'm, I'm fully expecting she's going to turn up at both of our houses. Puppet Master Sunak. She's gonna, you know, she's just got all these conservative pawns that she sends after us. Not anymore. Control. Not anymore. She doesn't. I think no. they'll, they'll be in California next month. There's no way he's staying behind. There's no way he's staying behind. We just no. Why? Why, why would you? I mean, like I even said this because Liz Truss, the lovely Liz Truss, oh, is my Liz, local. From, was was my local MP. Now, gladly not. Formidable um, women. <laughs> and I've always said that she, she took that job. She was given the job. Essentially, the Conservative said, "Look, somebody needs to take the hit here. This is all going to go to shit. <clears throat> Who wants a really good pension?" And Liz was just like, yeah, I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it. Yeah, and she's just, you know, they, they, there's, they knew it was all going wrong, you know. She, so she just took she just took one for the team. She is like, <coughs> she is like when we were at... She's also terrifying as well. Well, she... Because she looks like she... When, when she gets asked a question, it's almost like you could see the buffering circle in her eyes, you know. <laughs> she's not, she's not got like irises or anything. She's got oh, like it's, windows. It's, she's it's got like weird. Windows. It's really she weird. She just doesn't know. How it, it's the whole. I mean, pork markets was brilliant, but the other thing she came out with recently was oh. like, I have a shower head in my house, which is similar to a shower head that Ronald Reagan had, and I was just like that. What you be? What are you talking you'd about, Liz? Be, you'd be making sure that some. Are you making a cup of tea, Liz? No, no, we don't take the kettle into the bathroom with us <laughs> and put it in the <laughs> bath to fill up the kettle. How on earth? How on earth can you be the prime minister following on from Boris Johnson and talk more shit <laughs> than Boris bloody Johnson? I mean, the man who just dribbles for a professional living, you know, just unbelievable i just absolutely i don't think any of them knew what they were doing i think you know what it's like um it's almost like and you get the impression is that basically the tory government were like the teenagers who were 17 and 19 years old who the parents they've, they've been talk telling their parents all weekend the weekend before no no go away Go and have that bed and breakfast. Take that weekend away in York. You'll absolutely love it. We'll look after the house and not do anything. And then they've let slip to their parents. postal vote forms. Let let (laughs) slip they've had an actual party in the house. And the parents are literally the Labour government coming in and discovering that everything is broken. And now they're going through the cupboards and discovering everything has got sperm on it. (laughs) <laughs> and just tried to find out that you know that somebody has and put prawns in the curtains and they've done like a poo in the attic that's not going to get found and you know it's months and it's yeah it's going to be like it's going to be like for years afterwards where you find a fucking strongbow tin <laughs> under the sofa and exactly. stuff like that and, you know you, you 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 go to put some flowers in the vase that was on the kitchen shelf and there's you know <laughs> there's there's half a half an ounce of weed in there and a load of rizzlers you know so they're like where is this shit still coming from you know <laughs> and, and and that somebody's and that basically the home sexy video that you and your wife shot has disappeared. 
potentially well that with with the conservative party that's very Very, likely very 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 likely (laughs) very likely very very likely i'm still looking i have an entire wall i'm going to show you this (laughs) i'm going to take this down just to give you context (laughs) i'm just going to leave this here right (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> an entire wall. A wall of Shane <laughs> Luke Pryor Gillis. It's a, it, it, that, I, I had not realised <laughs> until you said it quite how much I look like Shane Gillis. It's amazing. It's, but then it also it's it's, kind of like yeah. it puts us into dodgy ground because one of my favourite sketches that he does is he does a sketch about his uncle Danny. Who's oh, the Dan- cheese toasties. <laughs> the cheese toasties. Oh. And he says, he says, it, he says, I ducked it, but it nicked me. <laughs> <laughs> it nicked me. It, it nicked me. me. I, was, I don't know if he's probably subject to some kind of controversy. This is the problem. This is what always Oh, he, yeah, he, yeah. He, Everybody well, he, I uh, like turns he, out to be like absolutely dodgy and horrible. He and got, he got in loads of trouble uh, during the whole Bud Light thing oh. because he, 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 um, well, no, because he still he he still carried on like in Bud Light, like loads of like, ah. uh, Kid Rock was shooting cans of Bud Light in his backyard, um, <laughs> and stuff like that. Now, <laughs> now Shane Gillis is actually now like the ambassador for Bud Light, you know. Oh, um, that's so funny. But yeah, he's he did he did. Uh, I think he got in loads of trouble for saying something on a podcast, but ah, well. there aren't many American stand ups that haven't haven't pushed the boundaries we'll just, uh, over the last few years we'll you know. look forward to the netflix special right so speaking of fashion being in fashion because obviously as i like as normal i wouldn't catch up to the shane gillis stuff until much further down the line and finding out that biden's left an hour after he has <laughs> um uh, i got covid <laughs> four years after everybody else did so so that was that was <laughs> that was absolutely fun um I don't recommend it. I don't know if you had it, COVID, but um, I I did have it. I had it very mildly. The worst thing was I I kind of lost most of my sense of taste for a little while, which is when I realised that I had it, because like I made a curry for me and Sarah, no. and I was just like I just sort of said to her, "We were eating the curry," and I said, "Sorry about this." She's like, "Sorry for what?" And I was yeah. like, "It's a bit shit in it, a bit <laughs> bland." She was like, "It's very, it's lovely," and I was like, "Oh." Thank you, honey, but it's not. Yeah. It's it's not. It's not. It's just not got anything. I didn't didn't do enough with it. She's like, it's really nice, honestly. And I was, and I sort of carried on. I just suddenly thought, oh, oh no, <laughs> 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 I've just realised I'm I'm a bit sniffly and I feel a little bit shit, oh, and I no. now can't taste this curry that my wife swears is fantastic. <laughs> and I was like, and then I took a test and yeah, big there's the bar. I think I had it uh, one other time as well. Um, after uh, I think it was after a convention. I think I got COVID, but I felt I just felt a bit shit. I didn't. I, I just. I, I never got it bad. <clears throat> well, I don't know. I don't know if it's because I've got the whole autoimmune stuff kind of going on anyway. But my body decided, uh, it's it's going to get tired all the time, which isn't great. It's kind of like ten. I feel like I'm running at 10%. I have really, really good days. But it's really weird because we're both, me and my missus, we both got it. We're both in the same boat. We're, we're both like, you feel you're getting back to stuff. We're getting all the housework done and then we're going for a nap because we're so t- tired. And I'm like, I didn't think 50 was going to be like this. I'm not 50 yet, but I'm like looking 50 <laughs> down the barrel of the gun. And I was like, is this how tired I'm going to be all the time? I'm going to go and swift for the floor and then realize I'm kind of exhausted, which isn't... <laughs> Which isn't kind of great. <laughs> it stopped us. It stopped us from doing a lot of few things. It did stop us from going away on holiday, and also because you're feeling ill and tired, it actually stopped us from playing kind of board games on a face to face basis. So I jumped on to board game arena. Do you regret that though? No, because it's not. It's still not playing. It's not necessarily playing board games properly. And let me explain. It's good though, isn't it? It is good. Let me explain though. I, right? I'm a little bit blown away by how impressed I am with it. I am, <clears throat> I think, I am also impressed with how it's playing. Goodbye, Shane, I'm going to get rid of you. Because um, I keep looking at it and keep double taking. Every time I look, like, look at it at the back, look at it at the back. It got me, it nicked me. Um, <laughs> I, I see you, Danny. <laughs> No, Dad, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I am. I am. I'm 
making grilled cheese at night. Um, <laughs> which is very, very, very too close to, to, to Homer Simpson. Um, it's kind of strange because BGA is one of these things that allows you to play board games or it also <laughs> allows you to do one thing that you could never do face-to-face, which is to <laughs> wildly smash down cards on the table until the card that you actually play is able to be used. Because one of the things I've been able to like play a whole pile of games I have no idea how to play and played those <laughs> games and then got through the other side and still have no idea how to play these games that I've played because on it the allowed, other side. Yeah. Because the logic is there to basically say, oh, you want to play a card? Yeah, it's going to be okay. So here's the card you can play. And it's going to be caught. This costs. So this is the co- It's Res Arcana because we started to play a game of Res Arcana. Now, you're yep. a competent person. You know what you're doing with Razor Arcana. I've never played. The- I don't on board game arena though. I've already made two mistakes. Have you? I discard. I discarded a card <coughs> and got some things. I thought I was playing it, uh, <laughs> and I was just like, oh, this isn't right. So I, I like I went to play it, and it, but it was I was I was like, oh well, it's fine. I, I can use those. Oh, resources. You, you, you'll be <laughs> fine anyway because I have no idea what I'm absolutely doing on board game arena. My no. whole thing is quite literally: like, can I press it here? Can I press this? Can I press this? Can I press this? Is this working? And if it is working, then fine. But if it isn't working, then it's just kind of one of these things. So, um, yeah, we've got a game of Res Arcana going, which I found is um, it's really strange because um, you kind of lose momentum because it's turn based. Because I've played yeah. King, I mean King Domino is things like King Domino is okay. See, like I play King Domino, and it's kind of easy to know where you are with King Domino. I played Acropolis as well. Yeah. And it's fairly easy to know where you are with Acropolis. We played, I've played, um, I played Mythic Battle Ragnarok. You'll be pleased to know. I, I was going to say, I was going to say, are you, are you skirting <coughs> around the fact uh, of your horrific loss at Mythic Battle? I thought horrific. you were trying to avoid it. it was a you lost 4-0 How did I and lose you didn't four damage nil? anything. How did yeah, I lose 4 Because I... Because I picked up four and Phallus before you even attacked me. You never even attacked me. I thought you just had to pick up four of the thingies, the Unphallics, and then you'd win. So I had three in my possession. No, you have to absorb them with your divinity. How do you absorb them? It's a complex action. What, you have to... All right, so you have to use a complex action to absorb them. You can't just carry them about. And do you, can you only absorb them through the your kind of your big divinity god or... Correct. Yes. So you have to pass them to your divinity god to get him to absorb them. Or and I, absorb I them. started. To be fair, I, I, I started with a team that I was just like, oh, this is. I just spotted a nice little combo at uh, the beginning. I thought, well, oh, that will work quite nicely, uh, and it worked very nicely. <laughs> so, you know, I was kind of like wildly. I was literally um, wildly stabbing in the dark. Because I just went, <laughs> I'll go for the ones that look the coolest. So I went, oh, that that <laughs> set of eagles, that looks you could cool. Tell. Uh, that's a set of deer. They look, okay, they're elk. They look kind of cool. Uh, there's a big monster guy. He looks kind of cool. So basically, I, I I was like making the quick swoop and I swooped and I went, oh, I'm going to collect these omphalics. And that's me got three. Yay, I'm going to win. <laughs> I did not realise. <laughs> I did not realise. <laughs> That you had to pass them back yeah. to your big boy and get there was and get there was a there was a point I forget what it was I was already three 0 up because I had I picked this card called Mermir which is this uh, person that can uh, they're like a tree manny kind of root creature and they could do a deep root special ability which was two two spaces away hmm. they could pick up a, a, a phallus or a rune and bring it back to the space they're in. So I thought, well, perfect. I'll start them in the same spot as my divinity. Uh, I'll make sure that they could get at least the most I could get from where they are because they don't move. Once they're there, they, they couldn't move. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought, well, that would get me like uh, however many straight off the bat. I thought it would probably be at least two, and it was. So I did that immediately, and they just absorbed them with tear. And then I had some other people who could let me take cards back out of my discard so I knew I could get my my Divinity's cards back in to absorb more. Because usually, in a first run of your deck, you could never... Uh, 
or you yeah you can't ever absorb all four divinity uh all four phallus because you only have four activation cards and one of them you'll use to deploy the mm. the, the god in the first place mm. so and there was a point when i was trying to get that fourth one and i was uh we were having that sort of battle on the ship <clears throat> well i said we were having a battle i was beating you up on the ship yeah um yeah. with a iron gold warthog thing um and there was something where i was just like well, you didn't do something and i was just like oh he doesn't really know what I he's doing really know. <laughs> there was you, know there was something you saw that you should have like definitely done to stop me getting the fourth yeah. one and you didn't do it no. and i was like no. okay i'll just take the win here <laughs> do you know, I know what's funny do you know, I know what's funny i've played it like twice before i played you i won the first game because <laughs> <laughs> i beat i beat the other person's divinity so, no, that's, yeah, I I went into it knowing uh, that you would probably go with that tactic. Yeah. So you either you either you either go for getting four four runes or phallus, uh, or you kill the other god. So I was just like, okay, he'll probably go with the kind of more simple to see strategy of just yeah. going for my god, try to kill it. Yeah. Um. So I took Tear as my god. Because he's probably the most powerful god to just stand on his own, you know. So I thought, if if he comes for me, then then he'll be able to sort of hold his own while, I, uh, and hopefully, I'll be able to protect him if he gets caught out, you know, kind of thing. Um, and I hadn't used Tear before. Tear's a very nice god. He's um, he's a badass. I did I didn't really particularly use him in this game. Of me, okay, but... yeah, fair, oh yeah, okay, yeah, okay, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Okay, 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 okay. I think <clears throat> I was really I I really enjoyed it. You like you can see the the good in I it. I can see the good in it. I, I think it's it's got a, an awful lot more um, layers to it than I guess I first I first expected. Because um, I was just like, oh, I'm going to battle and it does, yeah. Because I think the the reason I, I had and this is this all this all makes sense now. When I played, when I played the the game the far the second time i lost the second time was like one of these things i'm just not getting anywhere and i lost but the first game i was trotting running about the board with the four on phallic stones obviously not <laughs> absorbing them and then <laughs> it said right, i'm gonna beat this guy up and then chased him and cornered his cornered the divinity and kind of beat it up so that's really how now the how i war now i know what i'm doing I'm probably going to go ahead and kind of lose other games. But then I've been playing um, <clears throat> Splendor. I played Splendor, which is fine. Um, but again, it's kind of like one of these things where it's all very much in the now. So games like, you know, your Splendor and Can't Stop and, you know, even Yahtzee and stuff like that, they're all very, very much in the now. You can kind of go back and forward and go into turns and you're not trying to remember what you did before. You're yeah. just kind of continuing with the here and the now. I've also looked at um, what else? Oh, Car Carcassonne as well. That's the same. That's very much a you do what you're doing with the now. But then when you yeah. bring on bigger new games, I, I, um, <laughs> I, I played. I, I, I kind of I played this ages and ages ago. City of the Big Shoulders, oh, which yeah. is a proper proper economic stocks and shares building a factory right. type of game. <laughs> There's, that is an ultimate kind of I've only just grasped what I'm doing but beforehand I'm just <laughs> clicking boxes just to see kind of it works but um, I must say I'm very impressed with it but it's um, I think it's very good at allowing you to try out new games to see if they oh, actually fit yeah. with you I think it's like if you were like worrying if you were like going well what's re is, is kind of like Isle of Trains because that's a game I've got playing it in fact let me just see Isle of Trains is a game I've got. Is another game which I'm just I'm not I'm just clicking things just. Yeah, to see I've how got it, it and I still haven't had a chance to play it. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm giving you know I'm giving that a kind of a I'm giving that a kind of a shot just to see how it kind of works. But games like say um, you can have a nice little kind of yeah it's lovely to have things like can't stop kind of just like sitting there and kind of playing playing away. It's kind of pretty. Yeah, it's pretty kind of cool. I'm kind of enjoying it. I like its implementation. I'm not Ark Nova. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing in Ark Nova. It's amazing. I am playing Slide though, um, which seems to be Slide. Slide's a game where you pick up a card, 
you get a numbered card, you then place that card at the side of the grid of 16 cards that you've got, and don't ask me to explain it because I don't know what I'm doing. So I've got that, I've got um, Lost Ruins of Arnak on the go, which I have no idea what I'm doing. Splendor, um, I played... How many games are you in at the moment? Uh, 12. <clears throat> God, no wonder you can't keep up. Agricola. But then you get ones like, say, um, like, say, um, Quantum. Now, Quantum was started, I usually play these at night. So, Quantum was started about, uh, like, about five, six days ago, and this stuff had, like, two goes. You know, City of the Big Shoulders, again, seem, it seems to be progressing kind of quite nicely. And then you get games like, you know, Pax, P- uh, P- Pax Premier. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing with Pax Premier. I'm just like <laughs> pressing buttons. But it's again, it's just, I think it's really, really good to kind of give you an indication of what you can, whether or not a game's going to be kind of uh, worthwhile if you're going to like it or not. I think it's kind of very good with that. Um, well, I really liked, um, as soon as I signed up to it, I thought, oh, I'll have a little play with it, just see, see how it works. And I th- I saw Heat was on there. I thought, oh, I, mm. I, I really like Heat mm. and I'll... um. I always thought when I play Heat, I always thought, God, you know, I could actually sit and solo play Heat, yeah, really happily. Mm-hmm. But I, there's lots of games I would like to solo play, but I could just never be asked to sit it up and do it, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but BGA is perfect for it. I mean, like absolutely perfect for it. I mean, I've, I've, I've done near near as damn it an entire Formula One season, you know, just. Yeah, and you can you of, can rattle because it does it so quick. Yeah, you know. yeah. There's some games that yeah. work really, really well on it. You can just like you can just kind of go ahead and just they're set up, and I think it's really good for handling games where there's a little bit of management that you have to deal with. But there's also games where you've got yeah. multiple options, and you know you can literally yeah, I've got multiple options, and it steers you in the right direction. Sky Team's interesting. Sky Team's I didn't very think interesting. About Sky Team, I've really wanted to play Sky Team. I've hmm. been playing. Are you not played Sky Team? In no, IRL. I've, I nearly picked it up a whole bunch of times, no, but I haven't played it yet. I've, it's one of those, it's a sort of smaller two-player game, so I I just know I won't play it that much, you know, so I just hadn't got around to picking it up, you know, but fully kind of expected that at some point I probably would, I'd see somebody selling it, which I, I do see a lot, to be fair, people selling it, but I don't take that as a slight against the game. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I think you and Elliot would have the best time playing sky really? team because it's very very simple but it's also i think it's perfect it's perfect it's a i think it works really really well in the dynamic where you know the other person right reasonably yeah. well and because the the entire thing of sky team as you know is it's just like you roll dice and one is the co-pilot, one is the pilot, and on your turn you will place a dice in certain parts of the Sky Team kind of console, and that will decide if you're bringing your flaps in, what your altitude, what your speed's going to be, what your pitch is on your plane, whether or not you're calling into air traffic to control to clear away kind of planes, and it also you've got other you can play dice into cups of into coffee cups basically and that allows you to change the face of dice but the whole the whole brilliance about it is that once you start playing around and once you start once you've you know basically once you start on that round you can't talk you're not allowed to talk to each other you're not allowed to tell each other what dice you've got you're not allowed to communicate what you think it's going to be doing so it's down to this almost like it's um it's kind of like the it's kind of like what the mind would be if the mind was a good game, basically. Because I think the I don't like the mind. <laughs> I just I think the mind's just I don't. I have never understood the mind. I've played it. I've tried it. I've persevered with it, and I just think it's just this is this is a game that could be played with like a deck of cards. It's you know it's not. But yeah. Sky Team is kind of different in that you get this you get this wonderful sense of when things go <coughs> very very right then you can just be cruising along. But when things go wrong, and there are places where you can go wrong if your pitch on your plane is the wrong way, if you um, if you don't clear the planes out of the way before you land kind of thing, if you're not adjusting your flaps enough, 
then you can end up in kind of like real trouble and you can end up crashing. And if you crash, it's kind of game over. But you get these beautiful bits where everything goes really, Makes really sense. right. <laughs> everything goes yeah. really right. And you both look at each other and you're just like, this is amazing. And then you get points where, for whatever reason, the dice haven't, the dice, it's never down to usually mistakes. It's usually down to you've rolled a crap dice. And there are, there are kind of mulligan tokens which allow you to completely re roll all your dice. But then you're taking it back to chance again. Right. So you could end up rolling another set of crap dice, but it just it kind of um, it kind of works. It doesn't take that long to kind of you're looking at a bit. I think mm. it's about six, six or seven rounds at the very, very most. But it just it's just kind of and I just think if you've got if you wanted to sit down with somebody and just play it as like a couple of friends that know each other, I think it would work. It would kind of work quite well. But um, yeah, but yes. So BGA has kind of can become a. A little bit of a of a darling just to allow me to kind of play games. It's kind of interesting. I played Acropolis and absolutely destroyed some of the Acropolis to the point where. <laughs> well, you know what? You've played Acropolis, haven't you? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, love it. Yeah, Very good it's, game. it's a lovely game. But the person who I was playing against, they were basically they had obviously they'd done what I would normally do, which is not bother reading the rules before you started a game, and they were basically. They were putting everything together. So they were kind of... They got all their yellows together, all their... You know, they put their barracks in the centre of a city in a group of four. They would put all their merch, their markets together as a group of five at the edge. And they'd ended up with something like 27 points. And I was just like... I ended up sending them a message and just saying, oh, you realise that you're kind of... <laughs> You know, you need to kind of move these about and stuff like that as well. He says, "Oh yeah, yeah, I've just, I'm just guessing how I'm going. I'm just like, well, that's cool, that's kind of fine." But you do get some points where you absolutely dominate some people, and then you go and play a game like King Domino, and on BGA you get like a rating of how well you're doing. So you get like a laurel wreath <clears> with <throat> your numbered rating, and you uh, you go up against somebody who's like, obviously, this is all they do. They just play King Domino. This is their FIFA. <laughs> this is their FIFA. 98 or whatever this is all they do and they're like their laurel levels <laughs> like at 700 or something like that as like i played them and whatever they did they just managed to absolutely destroy me by like 50 or 60 points it was just it was just <laughs> it was just ridiculous so but no bga has been keeping that's a weird game that's a weird game to become an absolute dominant god <laughs> i love just, i love king Domino, but it's it's, it's one like, of you know what specialist skills you it's want? It's such a family game. It's such a you know. I just can't imagine. It's just but uh, no, it's been good. It's kind of been good fun. What about yourself? What have you been getting to the table, Mister Pryor? <coughs> yeah, in, in, yeah. Since we last spoke, I uh, played Foundations of Rome. Ah, nice. Which was fabulous yes. as always yes. because I bloody love Foundations of Rome. Um, we sure we played something else that night as well. We played a small card game. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We played um, Longshot, the dice game. It was friggin' brilliant. Absolutely loved it. Um, I'm actually starting to realise there are some rolling rights I like out there. Is that the one with um, the horse racing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to... Yeah, by uh, Chris Handy. Yeah. I'm just... It's um absolute cracking game. Yeah, so it's a bit... It's got that kind of, if you like, camel up you'll like it it's got that similar sort of vibe to it um i played you, yeah i played, it, I played each, it each 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 where they take a turn you you roll these two dice and then you assign those dice however you wish on on your your board which could be like doing this little set collection bit which gets you bonuses or adding bets to horses um or you can like buy horses so that even if that horse wins you'll get more money from it um uh, and that dice also moves the main horse, but then, then when when a certain horse moves, it'll move other horses depending on which ones are like ticked on its card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can like add, you can add a horse that you want to win to those cards. So try and try and get it moving more, regardless of whatever horse gets rolled, sort of thing. It's just a really really fun things really really enjoyed it really really enjoyed it I, um, I played it after a game of Oath <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. yeah and yeah. my brain was just like I could I was like my brain went no I can't even deal with this anymore 
I'm just like, <laughs> you know, I found it, it was good fun. I like the fact that you kind of ended up, it was like you were spreading bets and stuff like that. So as the game progressed, you were just like, well, I'm going to yeah. cover this one and I'm get this money for this one and this money for this. Yeah, it was good fun. It was nice and the quality was fun. It was kind of like there was a quirkiness to the kind of the artwork as well. It was very kind of... Um, yeah. The artwork was a little bit kind of reminded me of like Quan Chai. I think there's a couple of different, maybe a couple of different versions of the game. No, well, there was the original version, which was long shot, mm. which was just a sort of classic horse racing board game. Mm. I don't know exactly how it worked, but it was very, very different. Yeah. Um, might have said like it was an old school, you know, came out a lot longer ago. Um, uh, not you know nothing to do with roller rights didn't even exist back then i don't think well outside of yahtzee um uh but um and the yeah the artwork on that was just just nice pictures of horses just you know yeah just nice artwork Proper. whereas this yeah has very cool fun yeah, it's pretty cartoony much. look to it and like the horses have funny names and stuff like that so yeah. yeah really really good game really surprised me at how much I enjoyed it and I could see why it got so much love you know I'd, I'd always heard very good things about it when it came out um, I think I picked it up at UK Games Expo I yeah. think it was one of the I picked up a whole bunch of I didn't pick up like many big games or anything at UK Games Expo I just picked up a lot of smaller games and that was that was one of them um, but I think I mean I think that is literally all I've played uh, oh uh, well, no, I tell a light. We had a game of Quirkle the other night, I saw which was that. good fun. Family game of Quirkle. Quirkle's it's pretty good. Such, it's such a great game. It's just so bloody brilliant, you know. Um, yeah, I absolutely love Quirkle, and I could see why. I think it was a was it a Spiel des Jahres winner? I think they are. I think you're like your King Dominoes yeah. in this, or are. I think actually yeah. Sky Team just won a. Spiel de Jar as well actually I think that's why I was reminded really? to actually yeah I think it's just been announced it's, it's kind of won some kind of award so that'll be kind of pretty good yeah Quirkles it certainly seems to be getting a lot of love Sky Team I hear nothing but good things about it uh, I think like I say I do see a lot of people selling it but I also see it like instantly bought by whoever is it's somebody you know it's it's never available when I've sort of gone to see how much they might be selling it for. It's already sold every time. It's because it's quite an inexpensive game, isn't it? It's only like, I presume, to buy brand new, it's probably not even thirty quid because most people are selling it for like twenty, twenty two like quid, twenty five, so, twenty four ninety nine at the most. I yeah. think I don't think it's kind of like I don't think yeah. it's that much at all. I think what it is, I hadn't. I think what it is is I don't think it's a board. I don't think it's a board game group kind of game. And well, no, because it's two players. It's two players, so. so I don't think you can take it along to a club and then say, oh, we're going to have shots of the Sky Team unless unless you had, like, two or three copies of it. Um, I just don't think it kind of works like that. I think it is one of these games that you would kind of keep. Oh, you can actually get it on... Well, oh, surprisingly enough, it is. Where is it? Oh, it's 23... It's not pretty. Uh, the go. thing with it is, you get all these different kind of missions on it as well. So once you even kind of break or learn how to break the game, then you can go ahead and you've got all these kind of different kind of variations, weather variations, and more planes and stuff like that as well. So it's pretty. You know, there's. A, I think there's an awful lot more kind of more to it in terms of kind of what it offers on the table. It's pretty. That's kind of. That's kind of pretty cool. Um, <coughs> I am. Um, the only other game I pl well, I played. I've been kind of on and off. I played. I played King Domino. Um, I've been playing. I played a game called Verdun, but that was a Kickstarter type preview. Type Verdun game. as in like World War One. Verdun. Verdun as in the nine months of the Verdun war, kind of warfare, which was kind of like a. You can imagine it's like a trick taking game, but there's only two suits. There's either the French suit or the German suit. And right. it's like you, one of you plays the attacker, one of you plays the defender. You play, you play cards into a trick. Whoever wins the trick, then is basically deciding if they've managed to overrun the, basically overrun this particular lane. It's like a lane battler, um, and then they get um right. kind of fortifications to turn over, and then they kind of win. It's quite, it's quite um. It's kind of interesting. It doesn't take that. It doesn't take that kind of long on the table. It's coming to kickstart over the next couple of, 
weeks actually and there's a I've done a kind of a little write up piece on there to check I did also play um, <coughs> Imperial Miners <coughs> from Portal Games uh, that's one I've nearly picked up a few times as well I, <coughs> I liked what Z, Z was talking about it on the Dice Tower and I liked what he the way he talked about it and sounded appealing it sounded like a fun game you know for a you know light but not not you know just good fun just honest good fun sort of game it's it's fun to play it's it's multiplayer solitaire at it's worst right okay we played yeah. it kind of like, I, I like that we played it like five we played it like five player and the puzzle the puzzle's really really interesting i mean you have you have like a mine you've got levels of mine so you've got up to i think it's about four levels of mine so you're digging down you're adding cards to kind of like your mine structure those cards when mm. those cards basically have different powers so when you add like a when you add a card to your mine you then you're building like a pyramid almost um almost like a brick structure sorry and then what you're doing is as you when you lay a card down you then you you take the power or you 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 carry out that you resolve the power of that particular tile and then you resolve the power above it and then you resolve the power you got a choice the choice of two and you decide which one you're going to resolve and each of the tiles have got like lovely little artwork of different kind of uh, um, different kind of teams so you kind of like get um, mm. barbarians and scots and um, all you know all different kind of teams and the whole thing is about building up kind of getting yourself up to kind of like points it's basically like a big huge kind of point salad and <clears throat> it's good fun but and I think everybody enjoyed it and I was I was kind of had my brain fog on so I was so busy concentrating that folk went oh, you look like you're having the worst time and I'm like no I'm actually having an okay time it's just that my face has not <laughs> decided to translate that into some kind of smile basically and uh, but it was fun but it was <clears throat> it was very very much kind of multiplayer kind of solitaire I mean whether there was five people around that table four people around that table 70 people around that table it would not have made the slightest bit of difference to how my individual game would have progressed but you know but do you do you mind that i mean there are games no, that do that to I be mean, honest euros, there's Euro, euros do that yeah uh, there's yeah i do, there's i don't like it in a big game but i like it in a game that's going to take 45 minutes to an hour where you're just figuring out your own little puzzle there's a game uh that was quite a big kind of hit in a sense you know a lot of buzz was after us oh yeah yeah um, yeah that was last year yeah and after us is absolute completely mm -hmm. multiplayer solitaire i couldn't give two shits what another person does yeah. on their turn uh you just do what you're doing and you figure out your little puzzle and your, your little chain of stuff um and i think thoroughly enjoy it i think it's a really lovely little puzzle i wouldn't want to do it all the time no but um you know um and i wouldn't want to play like go to game night and sort of play two or three games that turned out to be just multiplayer solitaire no. i would you know that that that's not something i would want to have happen very often but um uh they've got a time and a place and if if it's a good fun puzzle then that's I'm all for it, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, I I'd, I think I'd forgotten that they said about Imperial Miners. I think I think that in fact might be why I didn't get Imperial Miners because it was. I remember them saying about it being uh, sort of multiplayer solitaire, and I was just been like, oh, you know, again, it's one of those ones that I put in the back of my head mm. of like, if I see it for cheap for somebody <laughs> selling it, I'll grab it, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, but I won't yeah. rush to get it. It's not it. bad. I mean, it looks. Yeah. I mean, it looks. It looks wonderful. The artwork is amazing on yeah. it. The presentation is amazing on it. It looks really, really lovely. And when you've got, when you get into kind of like the, um, I think there's only about seven <coughs> rounds. So it's, it, it doesn't take that long to play. We had our normal kind of two hour gaming session or two and a half hour gaming session. And it was quite easy for us to get through an entire game of Imperial Miners. Um, but you're right. I wouldn't, if I was at the, if I was at the club, and I was catching up with people. It's not a type of game you would necessarily. It doesn't. 
it doesn't kind of promote any kind of social thing. There's no kind of back and forward. There isn't any mm. kind of take that. There's no way I'm influencing Or, or any social thing you get from the game has got nothing to do with the game. Yes. It got yes. it just yes. you know, it just yes. the chat around the table. Yes. You know, it it didn't it didn't yeah, evoke any social yes. interaction of, of its own accord. Yes. It's yeah. it's on the opposite scale to say something like Moonrakers. Which I played as yeah, well. Exactly, and which Moon, is all Moonrakers is absolutely entirely. What are you going to do? What about you? What are you going to do? How are you going to do? It? And it builds up to this. It's almost like um, it's opposite ends of the spectrum where the game is Moonrakers provides a framework that brings on the social interactivity on it, whereas Imperial Miners yeah. provides you with ninety five percent of the game. It provides you with all of the game. You don't necessarily need to worry about kind of any kind of social interaction. And I would quite happily and 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 Colin that was sitting next to me, um, he was saying, he's saying this is a wonderful game. He says, but I did not have to have any of you round me at all tonight <laughs> in order for me to play it. And I can imagine you kind of sit, I can imagine you kind of sitting there, and it was basically it was the. The irony is the fact that the solo rule part just says, "Oh, it just the solo rules." You just play it like <laughs> you, you just copy what you've done on yeah. the main rules. There's no, it's, know, there's it's, nothing different. It's, it's it's never a good thing, really, though, in a game where you could get to the end of the game. You can say, "Right, okay, cool, that's the end of the game." Yes, and you look up, and the first thing you actually say to anybody in the game is. So who won? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, because you don't have a clue how anybody was doing because yeah. you didn't care. Yeah. You know, you're just doing what you were doing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, but like I say, yeah, it's fine. It's got a time and a place. Yeah. Um, and you know, if it if it's you know, if it's not a particularly great game or it's not particularly well produced, then it's going to absolutely fall by the wayside, and I'll, I'll you know play it once and just never play again. Oh, I did play a game actually. Oh, here we go. I did play another game. Okay. Now, I just suddenly thought about it. It was awful. Um, it was the best game. Uh, so, <laughs> the only game we played on the stack party. So we took a whole load of games. We were in a we were in a lodge in the Yorkshire Dales, uh, a lodge you and I have been to. The only place we've ever spent any time in person it was together. Absolutely in beautiful time. Um, it was just the best. Stunning it was place. Just the best. It's such and, a the- Gearstones. Yeah, it's an awesome place. Yeah. And the only time I was there before was, like I say, with you, and it was snow everywhere. So I never experienced anything of the Yorkshire Dales outside of driving to the lodge. Um, whereas this time, you know, the weather was much nicer to us and we got we got to explore our little part of the Yorkshire Dales. Um, but I took a whole load of games yeah. just in case, you know, we got absolutely rained in. You know, took all the all the obvious things for a big group like Secret Hitler and all that, like Skull King and stuff like that, uh, Sheriff of Nottingham and stuff. Um, but somebody else did bring one game, um, yeah. which we played on the first night. Are you naming the? And are you naming a game the person? Barcadia. Barcadia. Uh, my mate Lloyd. Yeah, Lloyd. Barcadia. Well, Lloyd. You probably did see Barcadia, but I, I'll be pretty guaranteed that you haven't played it. So it was a game that involves your player piece being an empty glass. Okay. Have you seen this game? I probably and it's, have seen this game, uh, yes. So it's a game and your life total is the liquid within your glass. Ah. Um, and you, you're you all these, you know, fantasy trope characters, a barbarian, blah, blah, blah. They've all got hilarious names on them. Um, I can see where and this is going. You lay out all these, yeah. You lay out all these hex tiles face down, and you move your glass onto a hex tile, and you flip it over, and it's a creature, and you've got to roll a dice to beat the creature, or it's a duel, and you've got to roll a dice. You pick opponent to roll a dice against, and whoever you know loses has to drink a bit of their health, or it's a boss or it's a team up and you choose somebody to go with you to try and fight this thing uh, and you've got to get th- three power ups and then go and beat the boss tile which is just a harder creature so basically you're just moving these glasses around these hex tiles uh-huh. slowly drinking your beer uh-huh. and, a, and rolling a dice to arbitrarily beat a number it was utter shite <laughs> but I didn't care because I was with a load of friends and we were having a drink so but as a game goes it was balls it was absolutely 
shite. So, like, your life total, like I say, is your glass. Yeah. Uh, I very quickly died because several times I was just thirsty and I drank some of my life total, regardless of whether the rules <laughs> wanted me to at the point or not. But, uh, you know, a few times I was just like, yeah, I'll, I'll have a, another sip of a beer. Um, and eventually I did get beaten because I could because because it, it, I, I couldn't roll ever. To, I, I never actually beat anything all i did was ever was get hurt um and so my mate looked up the rules and he's just like oh okay so you could refill your glass and start at the portal at the beginning um i just went that's nah, fine i'll just i'll just refill <laughs> my normal glass and sit here and watch you lot carry on and we'll just go and i, just, I couldn't even be bothered to continue in you know because it was just one of those i mean it like it was like munch kid it could just go on forever you know because it was just all arbitrary dice rolls so you know and like you had to you had to get like i say three power-up cards or whatever they were and if you died you lost all those power-up cards so it was like so you're you just start right back at square one oh, again it, my was gosh. Like, it was like just i mean it's like i liked the, the the novel idea of the glasses being a life total great yeah, you know, yeah. all very nicely produced the hex tile the hex tiles were that kind of that that plastic that doesn't feel that plastic if you know what i mean it's slightly textured yeah, yeah i know what you mean yeah. so so obviously they could handle wet glasses yeah, being yeah. put you know on them and stuff like that so it was all really nicely produced the artwork was lovely you know but god alive they could have put some more effort into the rules and just making it a game remotely worth playing, you know. Um, but it was, just, oh, it, was, it was utter shite, really. <laughs> but really is, it, is that not <laughs> is that not the case? This is a this is a game about drinking, as opposed to like this is a game for people who want. Well, yeah, get but drunk. just yeah, but you just know. have a bloody drink. Yeah, I mean, I know, it was just but... like it, it, you know, it it was just. I mean, it was just it was just such a pointless endeavor, you know, kind of thing. It's like you might as well. Or, or like you, you might as well have just said well let's have a game of munchkin and who wants a beer you know <laughs> that, i mean it was just, you know, it, 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 yeah well exactly you know it, it was it served just as much purpose you know like i said half the time i sat there thinking right it's taking ages to get to my turn and i, I want a drink so i'll just have a bit of my drink you know yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to go get another glass to have another beer sitting there that I could drink when I fancied and then drink that one when I didn't roll a shit a good number on a dice you know it's just it's crap so so but, so yeah. so, that, so game of, I did play game of the game. month <laughs> barcadia is barcadia barcadia yeah barcadia barcadia well there goes purely on production levels alone there that's goes, it that, that's all it's got there goes that sponsorship <laughs> challenge you know there goes that opportunity out the window um, out the window i am i have uh i have just sleeved slay the spire though yeah. so i'm looking forward to getting that to the table because uh, it looks really good and i'm a massive fan of slay the spire on on the uh video game never version played it. of it um, never played it never played oh, such never a, played such it never, everybody goes on about game. it and I've never, do you know what I did play it on I think I tried it on the mobile and then had oh, yeah. had a bad yeah. time with the mobile because I think it was one of the first iterations of the mobile version and then everybody went oh no no don't right. don't play on the mobile play it on the console yeah I've only ever played it on my PC play, or Xbox, play on your yeah. console because otherwise the mobile version just it doesn't show half the stuff that you need to see on the screen the screen needs to be bigger for you to see what's oh. happening with the cards and stuff like that so <laughs> I don't do it I have heard a lot of praise about it I've heard people saying that it's kind of not I have as well game, and but it is so it was just good yeah and it's it's kind of weird isn't it because it's one of those <clears throat> it's one of those games where when it came out I was just like hmm this is this is this is such a pointless endeavor because it's a video game that's been made using the logic and algorithms of board games so it's a video game implementation of that and it's great and it works really well um and it's nice that it's a video game because it does all the stuff for you that you exactly. don't need to faff yeah. about worrying and doing yeah, that's what you know say, so yeah. when it came out i was 
I just really wasn't thinking that much of it. I thought, well, no, I don't. I don't need Slay the Spire the board game. I'll just play Slay the Spire. I love Slay the Spire. That's fine. Ah, yeah, I saw. You know, I saw um, that. I saw that advert. I saw that sort of that argument again and again and again, which is like, yeah, I might as well go and play like Banner Saga or something like that. I might as well go and play all these. Yeah. You know, I might as well go and play the. Um, you know all these kind of sim games it's like try to do sims you know try to do the sims mm. on a board game of that how's that going to work with you know the sheer amount of volume and calculations and everything that kind of happen it just doesn't work stuff, out stuff yeah but when everybody just kept saying so much praise for it you know i was like good. okay well there's got to be something behind this then because the general consensus and consistent feedback seems to be that this is bloody brilliant so that's good and and that's and it doesn't surprise me because like i say it's a freaking excellent video game it's so well done you know it's, it's got a very weird quirky kind of sort of crap artwork yes like you know the it's not it's it's got a it's got a style all of its own but the like all of the baddies and the artwork is just kind of crap it all looks a bit gcse artwork level but it certainly has a an endearing charm of its own because of that um, it's never going to win prizes for the so artwork. it's never ever going to win prizes. No, never. No, but no. it's it knows what it, it knows what it's doing. Yes. kind of thing. It's leaned into it. Yes. you know, um, which is kind of unusual because because when you talk about kind of like when you talk about kind of like um, board or video game to board game kind of adaptations, I've I've yeah, there's a few that do this. There's, there's a few that do okay. As long as they take a slice of the video game adaptation, like uh, if they can, if they take the right slice, if they take the right slice, okay. Yeah. Things that th- I mean, I've always liked Horizon Zero Dawn and the video, the game. video game. I also didn't mind the board game because it took a particular slice of the trials and used that as the basis right. of it. And I thought it worked kind of. I thought it kind of worked. It worked okay. Resident Evil works very, very well as a board game because of the nature of the shamblingness and the slowness and stuff like that kind of works quite well. Mm. I've seen there's also Monster Hunter World and mm. I'm not sure... Well, I have and I haven't played I'm it not, yet. But I, I, I've never played Monster Hunter World either. I'm not sure how that would the work. Video game. I'm not sure how that would work in a kind of a quick... Well, it's basically a boss battler, isn't it? Yeah, it's you pretty know. much going to be that. So we'll see. But the the, yeah. the irony of the fact that something that is actually technically a card game that you would argue that should that probably would have been a board game in the first place before it became a video game is actually a really good kind of <coughs> card game once it's in real life. That's kind of that's kind of pretty cool. Have Have you played or come across uh, the video game Balatro? It's the Balatro. <sighs> It's the bane of my yeah, life. Yeah, the, um, the bane of my life. You, you, you know it. Oh, yeah. I really. It's one of these things. It's kind of like, um, yes, it's like drinking tequila. <laughs> it's kind of like, like yeah. I kind of like. I kind of like feel that it's kind of like every time I play it, I eventually the overall feeling is I'm quite mellow and kind of quite enjoy it, but. It also is quite bitter and is also a little bit kind of frustrating and a bit bitey, and yeah. there are points where like you can, um, it's I mean for people who aren't aware of Bellatro, it's basically it is like playing poker except the jokers do different things to the cards, so they'll increase the score. Poke, poker the deck building game. Pretty much, it's no. poker the deck building game, and um, yeah and you can do runs of it and you're getting up to like the seventh or eighth what they call ante of the run and mm-hmm. then it can just all fall apart <laughs> and you can feel like yeah, you're oh yeah you, you can, can have, have absolutely bad you time. can have a, a big blind that just screw oh sorry a boss blind sorry that just screws you you're just like well that's it yeah i'm, I'm toast yes. you know kind of thing yes or the, also the amount of times i've not noticed what the boss blind is and it's you can only play one hand and I've just not noticed that that's what it was and I've played one hand thinking oh that'll do fine and then it's just game over and I'm like what? <laughs> and it was only it was only only recently that I realised that if you used if you used like seeded runs 
they didn't count towards you kind of actually progressing in the game. So I got like a good run and I went, yes, I'm going to go back and use the seeded run to beat it. And then I'd beat it. Uh, and then I'd go back to the first What thing. is a seeded run? Is seeded run not just sort of saying you want to run that configuration again? Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah, you run with exactly the same yeah. kind of set. The, exactly the same beginning So the same stuff will appear. The same, the same yeah, boss yeah. blinds will appear. So it's yeah. almost like a training. It's yeah, I've like never done it. Thing. Never done it. I did. I used to like go, oh. How I'm, many times have you beaten Bellatro? Um, I've beaten the red hand. <laughs> that's it. I'm rubbish at it. I'm so bad at it. Cool. I'm not that I'm not one of these people that sits there for hours and just like rattles through it. I've just not got that kind of mind. Do you know the I was it was one of those ones I was really struggling with until I realised how powerful the multiplier multiplier is. Yes. That's where you, you win, you know, and the more you can get that to go up. You know, because it's just such exponential growth on your points. Um, the other thing was skipping. That's, that's where skipping I, I started blinds. to consistently win. Then it was skipping yeah. blinds as skipping well. Skipping blinds at the right time for the right thing. Yeah, because it, it rewards you more than than because you get to a certain point as you get towards the boss, the the main boss, the last boss, where you're like, well, I've kind of got my deck where I need it to be right now. Yeah. Um. So that money for me to just try and cycle through some stuff to try and maybe improve it yeah. but if I don't I don't is more valuable than the card I might get or the you know from uh, or the, the, the another you know because you might have your si- your five or six jokers mm. that you're just like well, they're the five or six jokers I have I, there is there is no other joker that I'm aware of that's going to help me more now than, than those that lot, lot are kind of thing you know that I'm set up now Um I don't think I don't think it would I don't think it would work as a game. I don't think it would work as a card game because of the maths involved. You don't think it would? No. I think it That's would That's a very good point. I think it would frustrate very, people. Very, I think you could lay point. everything out. And it and but the odds the odds it'd be a solo like game as well, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's I mean like like they've managed to make Slay the Spire a multiplayer game. Oh. Which I'm intrigued as to how that's going to work, yeah. you know, and really feel. Um, but I just like a Bellatro, I think it could only be a solo game, couldn't it? And then at that point, what's the point in like making it into a board game? Because then you'd be like, well, every round I'm yeah, going to have to work point. out my stats yeah. anyway. Then, then I really should just play Bellatro. Yeah, yeah, and then it's like, yeah. well, I might as well just, you know, I, play, <laughs> yeah. I paid a fat, you know, I've not even paid for this as part of PlayStation Plus. So, you know, I might as well just kind of like <laughs> play it because it's just part of the catalogue. So it's not, yeah. it's not any. Um, but it is such a bloody good game. So it very is, good. It is. It is. I just, yeah. I'm going to have to go and play it after. I've been playing, um, I downloaded. A pinball, um, a pinball simulator thing. And oh right, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I used to love playing pinball simulators on PCs and stuff. Um, so I've been playing this game called Fish Tales. Um, it's Fish Tales. Fish Tales. And the only reason I because the only reason I saw it and the only reason I'm playing it is was back in 1992, when I was at university. I was playing Fish Tales, the pinball game for real. And so when yep. I saw that Fish Tales the pinball game was available as Fish a Tales pinball, when it was available as a simulated game, then I was like, yeah. So that's what I've been doing, and I've been playing it with my boy. And he's like, I says, what? He says, what's this? I says, it's pinball. What? What is this pinball you speak had of, father? Had he never seen he's pinball not before? Kind of like oh. sure what it is. They don't it's know. They like, don't know they're born, do they? Don't know they're born. They don't, know they're born. don't know they're born. They don't <laughs> know they're born. But anyway, so. Anyway, so I was rattling up. Got 166 million last night. <laughs> it was like, I was like, I'm not going to bed until I get 100, over 100 million. I'm not going to bed. I'm staying up. And uh, luckily, I didn't have to stay up that long. And it was all, and then I got 166 million. So it's a point of, do I continue going now I know how to play the game? Or do I put it to one side and play Bellatro instead? We'll kind of see. I was going to say, have you ever played uh, Jeff, Eng- Jeff Engelstein's? pinball board games that he made no i Didn't haven't he make some pinball yeah i've never even seen them in the wild um so I've, I've never kind of uh super pinball something or other it was called um 
I kind of never really even remember anybody talking about them. No. Uh, so I have no idea if they're any good, but I, I respect Jeff Engelstein as a designer. And I do. He, he, um, he did some cool stuff. You know, he, yeah. tried, he certainly broke the mold. I don't think he always got it right. And no. there was, you know, some, sometimes they were, you know, they were, they weren't the best of designs, but that he, he, he tried different stuff. Um, I think he, he pushed the design ethos in places that a lot of people wouldn't ever consider taking it you know but yeah i've never i've never tried or seen any of his games uh, those pinball ones to see if they're any good or not well he talks i mean he talks about design stuff all the time i think he actually runs a sub stack where that's what he talks about he talks a lot about the maths and the science and stuff like that behind i mean his old yeah his old podcast ludology used to be fascinating yeah some of the stuff he would go through you know and you hear him explain it. He's very much, he's he's like the Neil deGrasse Tyson of uh, of board gaming. He he manages to deliver really quite complex and difficult mathematical information, and like the the game theory and the mathematical theory and the like the statistical you know stuff behind a game. He delivers it in a way that makes the layman go. Oh, oh okay i get what you're saying you know <laughs> kind of thing he's very good at that you know yeah. but yeah. what are you looking to get into the table yeah that you thought i mean yeah you must back so back the Oth- 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 <coughs> so yeah we will be back at oswan but um we we obviously had a bit of a break because of the stag party mm-hmm. and stuff like that mm-hmm. and my one of the guys he's um he's away on holiday so he couldn't do last wednesday and can't do this Wednesday, so we're going to have game night on Wednesday, <coughs> just a regular game night. So potentially slay the spire. Potentially, mm-hmm. um, uh, I would very much like to try six siege. Um, so hopefully, uh, at some point in the near future, I might be have, have the chance to play that. Do you have that from the? Uh, uh, I have access to it. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've I've heard very good things I've have heard, come from yes the the ashes. <laughs> you know the yeah. Uh, I've heard of, very of good games. things uh, as I'm well, but I am not very, very under things. no circumstances. I am a am I prepared to give that shit show of a company <laughs> two minutes <laughs> of this podcast time to even mention there are much better more ethical companies that you can be Amen. supporting Amen. and purchasing products from in order to help them in their game design journey and with that in mind mr Pryor, as he looks around his room going i'm looking for a way to escape um friend no 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 i was just thinking i, I was just thinking well, for wednesday night i'd I'd considered Slay the Spire, but I was just suddenly thinking, was there anything else that I'd mm. had in my head? Uh, I don't think so. I can't think of anything. I'd very much like to play again. I'd been thinking about it recently. Um, for Glory. Have you ever played For Glory or seen For Glory? Uh, it's the Gladiator. Roman Gladiator yes. deck building game. Yes. Yeah, wicked game. Very good. Absolutely wicked. Uh, only, only had chance to get it to the table a couple of times but we loved it when we played it it was a really good fun game i'd like to play that again at some point that's pretty good that's pretty uh, good i sort of saw mention of it on facebook or something like that um and i was just like oh yeah i need to play that yeah. i reviewed it a while ago oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i'm sorry i did i did play something i forgot to talk about oh, something so go. uh i went to my son uh has decided uh to not not carry on with the football training that he used to go to on a thursday night and <clears throat> friend of mine, his dad, for donkey's years, has run a wargaming club uh, in Fordham, just outside Newmarket. It's uh, called Newmarket and Ely Wargame Society. <clears throat> Lots of old crumbly fellas who love historical games. You know, they love playing Napoleonics. You know, back at back in their childhood and stuff like that. Um, and uh, so they, yeah, every Thursday they run a <clears throat> game night at Fordham Village Hall. I used to go kind of uh, as often as I could <clears throat> and uh, uh, I still get the emails coming you know what games are planned and somebody said like uh, oh sorry I can't make it on Thursday and I just saw that and thought oh what game was it oh that's Keith and uh, Keith and Malcolm's game uh, which is 
one of them's my, my friend's dad mm. and I thought oh I'll jump in that it sounds fun and it's uh, it was Death Race 2000 and it was based well it was based oh, wow. Death Race 2000 which is uh, the original movie that, that then got a modern version with the uh, the awesome gem of a movie death race with jason statham you know horrifically better movie than it had any right to be <laughs> uh, it's just a fun stupid movie but they'd used a uh, miniatures racing system rule set called uh, maximilian <clears throat> punk a uh, uh, punk style steampunk racing or something uh, like that uh. um so very kind of similar to gaslands but um uh, very much in that kind of world where you use uh, you could use you know convert Hot Wheels cars and stuff like that uh, and they'd converted Hot Wheels cars to to pretty much exactly the cars in the Jason Statham Death Race movie um, so and they tweaked the rules and done some stuff to to make it more Death Race um, and uh, I was you know, uh, I was a, a big fan of Gaslands, and I thought, oh, this would be good fun. Um, you know, I hope it's as good as Gaslands. Well, it's infinitely better than Gaslands. Oh, wow. it, it, you know, Gaslands is is great, yeah, but it is also very clunky and kind of gets in the way of itself all the time, and you know, it doesn't allow the game to kind of keep flowing. Like I've always said, Gaslands is actually a really good like arena car destruction derby fighting oh, game. Yeah. It's not actually very good as a racing game kind of gets it's too too hard to control the cars in in meaningful ways kind of thing whereas this is better in that sense and yeah we played that on thursday night had an absolute whale of a time they said oh by the way uh this weekend that every now and then uh, like every sort of couple of couple of three months they hire the hall for the whole weekend and like somebody will put on like some massive games of this and you know they'll play some of these big historical games they play all weekend though they they had a there was a game in napoleonics going on that was um you know like the the fold out camping table yeah. that's kind of six foot long and about two and a half foot wide yeah i know what you mean well they had those you know all with terrain and mats and stuff on top of it that were that were six of those long that's ridiculous all in one go yeah uh, so each side i think there were six dudes on each side could try i mean it was massive <laughs> and this was uh by the look of it i would have said it was 10 mil scale napoleonics so there was so much shit on this table <laughs> you know but it looked so dull but they were happy as pigs in shit so more power to them um uh, so yeah there was all the, that sort of stuff going on that weekend and then you know Keith had said to me he said oh would me and me and Malcolm are putting on a whole load of races over the weekend if you want to come and I'd sort of said I'd, I'd, I'd half considered bringing Elliot on Thursday night but it goes on a bit late um, so I was like oh yeah okay cool well you know check with Sarah that we haven't got any plans uh, that she's told me about three times and I'll just get in trouble for asking <laughs> if you've got any plans yeah. this weekend and she'll be like to remind me of the things she's told it's me five on times. the calendar um, it's on the calendar yeah exactly yeah why don't you um, the calendar but we we did have no plans so me and Elliot went over there for the uh, for the for the for a race for the morning session Aww. and had absolute whale of a time and he was loving it and Keith and Malcolm were so good with him because um, like I said he's, only, he's still only 10 so he's a, he's, a, he's an intelligent 10 but you yeah. know um, it's still you know he'd never played anything like that um uh but he was just like he was like after like turn four or five he was just like dad this is bloody awesome you know <laughs> this is great i'm loving it you know um and he as soon as we got there and he was picking up the cars he was just like oh that's great and he could you know saw the other tables he was like jeez look at that dad and i was like yeah that's crazy you know um uh and you know he he had a whale of a tire and he was he was so close to getting third place but his guns let him down on the last two corners and he just couldn't take out the person he'd been he'd been obliterating for the last lap kind of thing just chipping away at them and he just couldn't couldn't put in the killing blow uh but he didn't care he was just like yeah oh, that was team. brilliant it was absolutely awesome so so yeah that was that was that was a cool thing hopefully um i think i might try and take him you know i just say to sarah look you know on thursdays he might have a bit of a later night you know than, than regular but he's getting older now i'm sure he can yeah, handle exactly. 
hour and a half later or whatever than normal yeah. and so hopefully we might try and go over there a bit more often when they're putting on something a bit fun that i think he'll enjoy they'll probably you know? sleep because they do better. keith keith and malcolm are uh, great uh, they've done so many i mean these guys have been war gamers i i mean i've known their their son uh he was best uh, one of my best men at my weddings he's one of my best friends and uh i've known him for 30 years now wow so uh since i was uh, uh 11 12 um and um, his dad's been a war gamer since well before that you know and he's written rules and he's made up games and stuff and they do they've done all sorts of cool games they did uh one of them was uh something and something flying machine and it's world war one like silly world war one fighters but they're all these planes and they're on like bases that are also like a like the old car aerials so they you mm -hmm. you could change the height of them and sort of set them at different heights and you have this really fun dogfight and they they did a catch the pigeon version of it which was just <laughs> hilarious and they, they've done so many brilliant things and every year they do this massive um, chariot race and they've got this huge it must be must be 10 feet long this uh circus roman circus with the you know and there'll be like 20 20 people from the club will come and come for the night and do this chariot race and we'll go for a curry afterwards and stuff like that so so yeah hopefully uh, me and elliot will get to do that more often um and there was there was a whole load of games that i play like like dead zone and stuff that they've not tried before oh. um which i think they'll be interested in having a go at and yeah see, yeah, see cool. it'll be it'll be it'll, it'll certainly it'll cement or or f or put to bed whether elliot is a war gamer miniatures war gamer or not you know and um, ultimately decide it'll, whether it'll, you keep them or not let's face it ultimately decide yeah yeah i mean days. you know uh I, I, i've already bookmarked a few adoption agencies um you know just in case uh he, he isn't and just he's in obviously case it goes wrong i mean I've let's face the wrong it you've child got, at the airport at the, at the hospital you've got eden as well so i mean it's like it's not like you've not got a spare you know i mean yeah exactly i could try again i could try again you know <laughs> you know see how we go on with the second if you don't one. succeed try and try again if you don't you get know, a board yeah. gamer then that's fine you'll be, you'll be <coughs> and yeah and if it all, if that one doesn't work, hopefully I'll get a discount, repeat customer yeah. uh, for the adoption agency, and I won't you know get to you know charge so much. You know, I think see if I could do it like a sale and return, like a swap swap. I've still got, got, I've still got, got my receipt you know. for my last one, so we'll see see how we get on. Uh, I don't think I kept the receipt. Meh, you can get yeah. them when they're on the records. Just go and speak to. I think Must if you speak to that, um, Davina, <laughs> Davina McCall can always help you out with that. She's always good at like tracking these <laughs> things down, basically. You know. Um, <laughs> I do have. I'm going to mention a couple of games. What are, you, what are you hoping to get to the table? I have no idea. I do have a couple of ideas. I did have. Um, I'm just trying to think. I still. I made a promise a long time ago about getting GKR heavy hitters back to the table. So there's two. There's 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 three games that keep ending up coming into the table that I read about, that I read through the rules that I even almost set up and then I end up kind of putting them away and I think I've scratched my mythic battles itch, I know how to roughly kind of play that so that makes it easier for me me and the, the middle boy getting into the table but I am still wanting to yeah. get GKR heavy hitters back to the table because I've had it set up, I had, I put pictures actually on Instagram recently I say hey look, look what I've been setting up because I was actually trying to play the game so I want to get that back to the table um, and actually play it through because I keep, there's guys at the club that they play, um, is it Mech Warrior? Um, yeah. So they play that. One I've never played. Um, so they play that. So they're always talking about in battle, what's the other thing? What's it called? There's Mech Warrior Battletech. and Battletech, right? Mm. So they play Battletech all yeah. the time. Battletech's the one I've nearly played a whole bunch of times but never tried, but it... <clears throat> It sounds amazing if you could kind of wrap your head around all the potential. Oh yeah, I mean, it, it. like there's, everybody, there's, they sit there with. There's sheets. complicated versions of it, less complicated versions of it. Mm. Yeah, and the guys sit with Looks like sheets awesome, and though. dice mm. and all that kind of stuff, and they roll and stuff on the table, and it goes there. But GKR, obviously, if you, you, I mean, you've seen it. 
the size of the minis compared to that. I mean, the small minis on GK are about the size of the battle tech. Box. Yeah. So I'm thinking of taking these GK <laughs> yeah, minis yeah. in just to say, hey, look at this, and getting it, <laughs> just putting it on a big mat and getting it kind of played to the table. So I've got that. Um, um, I've also I've been meaning to get God Tier back to the table. Which is Steam Forge. Another game I've never played, because but I know I'd like it because it's it's got this. I never picked it up because I've got enough of those games, yeah. but I know I'd like it if I yeah, played it. Yeah, it's like got this lovely little mechanic of like you've got like the clash phase, and then you you've got the plotting phase and the clash phase. The plotting phase is basically, I'm going to move all my guys and take actions with all my guys, and you're going to take actions with all your guys, and then the next phase on the clash phase is like. I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a move with either um, all my mini all my leaders or my minions or you're gonna do a move with all your leaders or your minions or one of your leaders or one of your minions, um, and then you kind of go back and forward. But it's kind of got it's got this it's really kind of mm. cool interesting mechanic that you get like minions come in like groups of four, and then basically if you decide to do a move action with these minions then they they can all move but they can all move in different directions but if you decide to do an attack action then only not all four minions attack only one of the minions attack but depending on the number of minions that are sharing the same space with it it increases the strength so it's almost like the strength in numbers so you could go around in a pack and attack other you could attack like um you can attack like the other leaders the other kind of semi gods mm. um champions and the champions or whatever, or whatever. Them, yeah. i think they're called yeah they are called champions thanks um and you can attack them but if you attack them with like single minions you're not going to get anywhere but if you attack them with a little group of four or a little group of five or a little group of three then you increase the overall percentage chance of damage and stuff like that you get and it's just that it's that little kind of thing it's that little change from a kind of like a skirmish game and you're not necessarily going after killing other people's champions and their kind of their minions you're just trying to claim territory and hold on to the territory but also in the different factions that you have depending on the factions that you play as you either get more points for knocking out another champion or more points for knocking down a minion or more choi- more points for um destroying a banner that another champion has played or more points for claiming like a, a god tier area and it's just and it's all it's the ultimate and kind of asymmetric they've all got kind of like little special skills and stuff like that so i'm kind of looking at getting that back to the table but the main one is probably dwellings of Eldervale because i've had uh, that, I played it once i had that game for so long and i have the map and uh, it's Mike Delisio's favourite. He keeps on going on about how how lovely he is. I've heard I, you. Have you not played it yet? No, I've still not to my shame. I played it once at uh, the last Aircon in Telford. I think it was, mm-hmm. or maybe the one before that. Um, but it's a cracking game. Yeah. I could see. I could. It's one of those games. Halfway through it, you like. I can see why there's so much love for this. You know. Yeah, so I mean, it's just it's, 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 it's one of these. I've actually got the play mat, um, mm. which was like somebody was um, somebody was like, oh, I don't know if anybody wants this. And I was just like, I'll have it. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> but it's like one of these things that's kind of huge. It's huge though. It's about. Let me just see. I'll see. It's actually under the desk. I'll see if I can. <laughs> I can see if I can get it out. Isn't it? It's literally going to be like weightlifting. I'm not going to get it out. Just oh, I am. Do say this is brilliant podcasting. <laughs> right, okay, look, it is like it's literally like Mary Poppins. Right? <laughs> right. What well, is a big one? Oh bloody hell, it is a big one. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah, that is a good size one. Yep. So It's a playmat you showing me, people. Yeah. Playmat. Not anything else. Oh my goodness, <laughs> you've changed your name to Shane Gillis, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> I did that. I did that ages ago. I know, I know, I know. Um, but the only other thing, there's only the right. There's there's only two more things I want to bring to people's attention. Those games I've played. Um, there's a couple of kickstarters kicking about at the moment that I want to bring to everybody's attention. One of them is from your friend of mine, Sepe, which is called End of Sepe It's the end of end of the line. Um, yeah. 
which um, bless him go give him some love and give him some money yes because he's a he's, he's the man deserves it top he works person, very hard top person um, the only other thing is that and the people who work with him work even harder because they have to work with Seppi that's you <laughs> you work <laughs> You have to oh work. no! I, I don't mean me. Well, actually, yes. yes. I mean, bless me. Yes. God's sake. Goodness sake. But uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, his colleague Mark, who works very, he's a lovely guy. Who works with. That's him, me. You know, that's so. me blessing you. Um, <laughs> the, the only other thing is, El, 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 Elzra Games have got their latest expansion to their Catacombs series of games. Oh, have called they? Called Forest yeah. of Nazimur. If I'm getting that right. Uh, is that on now? Is that live on Kickstarter yes, now? Yeah. Yes. Now they were trying. They were going to go. It's interesting because they were going to go to Backer Kit, and then they went to Kickstarter. So, so I'm wondering whether I'm wondering whether go. I'm wondering whether go next. I wonder whether go next. Basically, so. The Fortress of Nazimor is that yes. it? Yes. I'm a big fan of the work. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to play it. I never have. No, I'm a big fan. Never have. Big fan. But I just wanted to show, show you that. Um, and I've always heard it's good fun. It is. It is. It is. Um, the only other thing I want to mention, and I realise we're kind of like, it's time. Time is going. Time is quick. Time is fast. That time. I went to um, I went to a board game cafe today for the first, I think it's maybe the Ooh. first time. And it's a brand new kind of board game cafe. What, as in you've never been to a board I've game cafe before? Or the first time you've been to this one? It's I've not been to a board game cafe before. Is it because they've all got your picture behind the counter saying, don't let this man in? Yes, because all he does is comes in and tries to, like, shark his podcast on you and try and, like, claim free drinks and stuff like that. That's what I... Yeah, I get that a lot. Why are you coming in wearing that T-shirt when you obviously look like a wizard kind of thing anyway? Um... But there, this uh, it's a new business. I was uh, wearing your T-shirt today, actually. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. When uh, I left the gym, no. I changed my shirt. No. It was we're not wizards. Well, that makes me so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy for some reason. That is <laughs> making me ultimately very happy for that reason. Um, I'm just gonna. Talk, I'm just gonna very very quickly. Talk. It's called the other place. It's um, it's fairly new. They have this kind of. It's. Uh, I'm going to give the address. It's 29 Kirkwind and Kirkcaldy. So Kirkcaldy is going through this Kirkcaldy. strange. Yeah, Kirkcaldy. Kirkcaldy. As Billy Connolly. Kirkcaldy. Wasn't Kirkcaldy like a, Billy, a, a, a linoleum. terrible linoleum yeah. factory? Yeah. <laughs> Billy Billy Connolly said people used to. It, they used to stop calling it Kirkcaldy and start calling it what's that fucking smell? Because people used yeah. to, people used to get off the train because of the linoleum factory. <laughs> Go off the train and go, what's that fucking smell? And it was the plastic yeah. from the linoleum factory, kind of lino getting kind of like produced and stuff like that. But it's um, the thing with Kirkcaldy is it's kind of going through a strange patch of kind of older retail, well established kind of chains and stuff like that um, are kind of disappearing. And, 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 and what's happening is you're starting to get kind of what I call kind of smaller independent kind of stores kind of opening up. So the other places, like, is one of these places. It's kind of opening, it's offering kind of, like, board games, it offers refreshments, it offers kind of a whole range of food and stuff like that as well. And it doesn't, it doesn't, it's like, appears more like a cafe than a board game place. Um, it looks more like a cafe, it does yeah, because I'm like just a, looking at, yeah. I've just realised I was looking at your pictures on the Google review. <laughs> I was thinking, oh, these are already posted now. Oh, by Richard Simpson. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're going to shell, shell The food hard. looks good there too. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it looks lovely. I mean, it's, as I say, it's a, it's a, it's, um, as far as I'm aware, it's a young looks, young couple that are trying to it get... It looks like they don't have a, a very extensive library yet, though. Not yet. It's quite a small little library, yeah. but, you know, but it's, it's a nice place to go yeah. and play games and Which is what you want. People. I mean, You don't it, need to necessarily use their library. No, I mean it's it's one of these things where you like you start off with a, a relatively kind of small library, you get people in, you build the clientele, people know they can play. The table next to us, they were like playing Uno. Uh, we played, I played Splendor, um, and Point Salad. Um, again, you know, Point Salad's all right. Splendor's fun. I'm kind of getting into getting into more into Splendor. Um, as as time goes Food on. Food looks really good actually. Yeah, as I say, it's like one of these things that's like usually sometimes the food in a board game cafe is kind of like second fiddle to here's lots and lots of tables, 
you know, and we have a, have a couple of tray bakes, and it looks like they're actually, you know, they're making an effort. So I went in today and I said to them, you know, um, I'm recording tonight. I'm going to give you give you a quick mention. Um, so this is what I'm doing. So if you are in the kind of the the Fife Edinburgh area, I mean, you've got... It looks like uh, a got, very nice space that yeah, they have. Yeah, it's lovely. Nice. It's lovely. And it's, it's comfy, yeah. warm and inviting. Yeah. Very trendy. Yeah, the, it is. The, it is. The, I tell you what, the, looking at the only criticism I would have, as, as nice as it looks, I suppose maybe they're not trying to be a board game cafe as such by no. the look of it. They're trying to be, like you said, a really nice cafe. Yeah, a nice cafe, a nice where you space. you can yes. come and play games. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah, yes. definitely. Yes, there is yeah. a... Because that, that looks classy at the front, really classy front. There is a there is another opened up kind of board game shop which specialises in cards and stuff like that. I'm just trying to remember. I think they're called Fire. Bro- How do you say this owner's name? Oh. I would, I would, looking at it, I would say Lewin. I've not. L-E-U-A-N. Lewin. Lewin? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say Lewin. Lewin, yeah. yeah. Lewin Ledger. There you go. Good work to you. There you go. Best of luck on your enterprise. Yeah. I hope it starts off well for you. Yeah, yeah. So we'll put, um, we'll see if they've got Facebook pages and stuff like that, and we'll stick the links in the in the show notes so that people can find He's it. He's obviously a there, gamer yeah. himself by the sound of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's yeah. see. Seems like a decent, decent endeavour, and we'll, you know, as I say, we like to kind of like get behind the local businesses, even mocks in the hole. They've got another sale on. Locks in the hole. I I had a look at that sale, and there was a few things in there. I was just like, "Oh, that's very tempting." They'd already been bought yeah. because they were ridiculous they fly prices. Out. Fly, <laughs> was fly like, out. It was like Grand Austria Hotel for like twenty quid or something like that. It was like it was so Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely insane, it's insane, you know. it's insane. Um, yeah. So that's the games I want to get to the table. It is time to put this to bed because I've got a busy day tomorrow. Busy day. Yes, you have. I have. I have. Um, but thank you very, very much for listening. Well, domination ain't going to happen itself. Well, you know, I'm already doing that domination, and if it's going to be one place I'm going to dominate, it's going to be the world. Um, if you have Might listened, well. if you've listened along tonight, and you want be quiet. If you've listened, shush, if you've listened along tonight and you like what you've listened to, there's a couple of ways that you can help us. Go to um, the various links on our various places and click them and follow them and like them. Um, go on to Sp- Spotify and drop us a rating or a review uh, or um, go on to a couple of things on the read the blog. We always write in our quaint rev- uh, written pieces and reviews and there's always something kind of happening on there as well. You can always jump onto Instagram. There's basically kind of continual, regularish content on a regular basis once I have fully got over the COVID. Um, and you can find us on we'renotwizards.co.uk or we'renotwizards.com in all the lovely, beautiful places. Um, yeah, there's only one more thing to do, which is remember <laughs> roll sixes. Stay safe. Make something awful. And stay spy safe. I've been Shane Gillis. Good night. <laughs> I've been Danny. <laughs> no, I'm not dead. I see you with that grilled cheese, Danny. <laughs> but until the next time, my name's Richard. My name's Shane Gillis. And love Luke. Bye bye. Bye everyone. everyone. A wizard is never linked. Is he early? He arrives precisely when he means to.